Hey fellow filmmakers, Cliff and Stommel here. Today we're putting together a Black Magic ISO video for you guys because I promised I'd do that a while back and I figure now's as good a time as any, so we'll just make a quick update here to show you guys how this works and the practical real world settings in which you can apply these kind of rules and principles. For my control environment, I've got inside the Stommel House Studio our model Harry here, as well as a little white balance card so you guys can see what's going on with the colors. And we have a black curtain for the background for the left side of the frame showing the shadow side of this thing with some texture and a white sweep on the right side of the frame so you guys can see exactly where the clipping point is and how that's affected by the ISO or not. So our base settings for the beginning of this are aperture T8 on a cinema lens and ISO 800, which is the Ursa Mini Pro G2's native ISO. For our test today, we'll be cross-referencing both false color and zebras to ensure that we understand exactly what's happening to the colors here as we adjust our ISO versus ramping our aperture. The readout that we want to pay particular attention to here is the clipping level. I have my zebra set to 95%, and in false color, this is represented by bright red. This means that we're actually clipping color information and we're exceeding the exposure range that the sensor can handle. As you can see, when I adjust the aperture, either tighter or more wide open, we're of course affecting all the tones and colors in the image, including the shadows and the highlights. Now watch what happens as we leave our T-stop at eight and adjust our ISO instead, you'll notice that the clipping point doesn't change at all. Whether we're at 200, 400, 800, which is native, 1600 or 3200, now what this means is that the sensor is effectively shooting at native ISO pretty much all the time. The best way to think of it is that Blackmagic's ISO change is effectively remapping how your shadows and midtones are being recorded and displayed, which is effectively an adjustment to your tone curve rather than actually adjusting the base sensitivity of the sensor. So what does this mean for how you can apply this to get better looking images out of your shots? Well, that partly depends on your theory behind how you like to expose for your color grade and what kind of format you're shooting in. Of course, if you're shooting in ProRes, you're effectively capturing all the information as it's been adjusted, baked into the file as shot. One of the great things about the versatility of Blackmagic RAW is that you can actually change your ISO in post-production. Remember, because the ISO is effectively a setting that's remapping your shadows and midtones, and as its name would suggest, a RAW video is pretty much just capturing unprocessed or minimally processed light information as it struck the sensor. So it stands to reason that a camera that's effectively using ISO to map your midtones and shadows, that you would be able to change this setting in post-production as well. This allows you to use ISO on top of whatever LUT you've chosen as an effective second layer visual aid when nailing your exposures on site, as well as sending a feed out to a client or even for your own reference on set. So although it may seem counterintuitive, because you know your camera's shooting at its native ISO all the time, if you're filming a night scene, you may actually want to lower your ISO to increase the perceived contrast range so that what you're looking at on the screen actually looks like nighttime. That extra contrast can really give you the extra edge you need to capture the most data possible in your midtones and your highlights where you want them and still give you a little bit of latitude to bring up your shadows and your lower end of midtones in case you need to. The same applies for shooting in the daytime. If you're shooting under high contrast situations like direct sunlight, you actually may want to turn your ISO up to give your shadows a little bit of a boost so you can see the full range of what the sensor is capturing. This can help you nail your exposures in the daytime without over crushing your shadows or over blasting your highlights. In this regard, you can basically use your ISO as an effective fill light on site when shooting under non-ideal conditions. And in a studio environment like this one, I chose to shoot at ISO 200 because I wanted the heavy vignetted look. If I had turned my ISO up to 800 or higher, it would have actually been working against me, pushing me to actually increase my contrast range beyond the point that would have been ideal for the sensor, which would have potentially introduced noise. So that's about it. Key takeaways here is that you're Camera is basically shooting at its native ISO all the time. If you're shooting in Blackmagic RAW, you can always adjust that ISO setting in post. And however you need to use this tool to pre-visualize your shots and how that's going to relate to your grade, you go ahead and do that. I do know some shooters who prefer to shoot at high ISO all the time and then bring their image down in post. 
I, for one, like to shoot with my ISO generally as low as I can so I can have room to bring information up in post. It all comes down to how you like to shoot, how you like to expose your image, and how you like to color your footage. Once again, this is Clifton Stommel, and I really appreciate you guys coming out and checking out my YouTube channel. If you guys like this video, if you found anything here helpful, go ahead and give it a like, go to subscribe, make a comment on the video for me. I will continue to try to talk to everybody and respond to all of your comments, questions, and concerns. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thanks again.